comes to being able to add waypoints, you know, whether I'm using that from the web map like I am right now or I'm doing it in the field, I like to stay organized with that, being able to use different icons and different color coding systems to be able to identify and be able to quickly go back when I'm scouting and getting ready to hunt, be able to pull all this information from my spring scouting or late season scouting and be able to utilize that in the fall in an organized manner. So when it comes to adding a waypoint, for example, we're on the edge of this logging cut here on the south slope of a hill. We'll put a, a mark here and say maybe potential for doe bedding. And if I was in the field and found doe beds, I would mark it as doe bedding. Come down here to the waypoint type. Let's look here. We have bedding area. Or for me personally, I like just to use the doe icon and be able to set that there. Then you just hit, you could add a photo to it if you were in the field so you can kind of have an idea what's going on. Um, or you come down, write notes and save. And now let's pretend that we're actually in the field right now and I'm gonna mark a spot. So we're gonna mark it down here at the bottom. Say I want a tree stand here. I would mark stand, come to the waypoints, go down to tree stand. And I mark all of my tree stands in the royal blue color. So that way, when it comes to the hunting season, you're looking at where am I gonna hunt at? What's gonna, what am I gonna do here? You can pull up your map with your thousands of waypoints if you're like me, and be able to identify all the blue areas that you mark for potential stand locations. And it makes it a lot simpler than trying to navigate through all these different waypoints. Within these, when I'm marking a spot for a stand, I'm really detailed in my notes. So I'll come down here to the notes section and type in, you know, good for northwest wind i'll add into the note sections the details about the location for example this one would be say good for a northwest wind bucks to scent check the downward portion of a logging cut during the rut and set up in a triple cherry tree facing the trail and the scrape and then i'll add a photo of say that triple cherry tree in there so one thing if you're coming in in the dark with your headlamp it's a little bit easier to be able to identify because when you're scouting so many different areas it's easy when you're in the moment to be like yeah i'll remember that and then once it comes to time it's a lot more difficult so i try to take really detailed notes being able to identify it so when i go back in there or it's six months down the road and i'm planning to hunt this spot i already have an idea of what i'm getting into and being able to stay organized with it same thing comes for when I'm adding trail cameras into the mix. So with trail cameras, I'll go over to the waypoint type, click on the trail camera icon, and be able to color code that in the light blue section. And within the, the notes of this, I'm going to write what type of camera I have. So for example, if I had an Exodus Trek 2 hung on the tree, I'd put it on there, what type of lock I had it on. Do I have it up in the tree high where I need a stick to access it? What's the battery life looking at? All of those details are really important. So again, if I'm at home and I'm getting ready to go check one of these cameras, I can look at it and be like, oh, I need to make sure I bring spare batteries. It was getting kind of low last time. Or um, also just by color coding it to make it light blue, same thing with the tree stands. You can look at a map and kind of see your plot and how you're running your trail cam strategy through a specific area. Kind of helps me find gaps on areas I'm covering well and other areas that I'm not. Another feature that's really helpful to be able to use, especially when you're hunting with your buddies or any family members, is being able to share that waypoint. So from the web map, you can go through, click on it. Um, say, for example, I wanted one of my friends to go and check one of my trail cameras for me. I could click on this icon right on the waypoint click share and it'll come up for a link for me to copy and email or text to you know my buddy that would be going to hunt that spot if you're on your actual hunt app on your phone it's really simple you click share it'll come up you can text it right to somebody they can pick it up access it and then say you decided you wanted to pull those rights from that person from being able to find where your stand is all you have to do is remove their access or delete the waypoint and it automatically removes off of their phone as well. 
this feature can be really helpful if you're trying to you have a buck down on the ground you're way back in the woods and you might need some help and you're able to send out your waypoint you can name it however you want buck down there's a, a waypoint for icon for meat you can send that out send that out to your family members your friends whoever is going to be there to help you and they can come in and start helping you while you're going through the field processing just something worth mentioning is with, because of the way that this app works and it works through an online database you even if you lost your phone in the field or something happened it got smashed that data is always backed up to your account so you could still go online it would have it there you could log in from a different phone and all those waypoints will pop back up when it comes to trying to actually find an area because the big woods can be completely overwhelming when you look at it from a map or if you're looking at it from a state level but one of the first things that I do to start choosing an area, especially if I'm going to a new state or just a completely new area, I'm looking at the major population centers within that state and trying to stay at least, kind of my rule of thumb is at least an hour away. If you can go two hours away, that's even better yet. But that kind of puts you out of the, the normal weekend trip for the people that are living in these populated areas. They're wanting to hunt a little bit closer to home on a weekend and you're able to kind of get in a little bit more remote places with that. And one of the things I look for is the terrain. Terrain can dictate how people get to places. So steeper terrain where you have to hike, you know, say up six, seven, eight hundred feet elevation gain, sometimes more to get to an area, to get to a ridge, you're gonna eliminate 95% of the hunters just with that. Or adding something like, uh, a river or a creek that you'd have to cross in there, that's another barrier to entry. So I look for all those things, especially if I think there's any potential for, for there to be increased human and hunting activity. There's a difference when it comes to hunting public land whitetails in the big woods setting. I kind of categorize it into two different sections. There's the big woods bucks and then there's mountain bucks. What the difference is and how you're looking for, for scouting is Specifically mountain bucks are, in my opinion, you have a lot steeper terrain, narrower valleys, a lot more benches and topography into it. You'd have those big long oak ridges, more natural terrain funnels. Uh, I think a big, you know, big open timber, mountain laurel patches on the sides of the hills, things along those lines, old growth forests. That's more of a mountain buck country. And I'm gonna hunt that a little bit differently well, actually a lot differently than I would a typical big woods deer where you still have topography and terrain and some decent size into the mountains and hills, but you also get a lot more vegetation features like your logging cuts and your hemlock thickets and just a lot more break up in the land and you're just your strategies when it comes to hunting these animals are a little bit differently. So kind of when you're looking to pick an area when you're scouting, have in mind what you want. Do you want to hunt these big ridges way out in these in the steep country? Or do you want to hunt some more thicker areas, hunting these logging cuts, you know, creek bottoms, beaver ponds? It all comes down to what you want out of the hunt and when you come into choosing an area. Now I kind of want to take a little bit of a deeper dive into these different terrain features. The first one that I'm going to talk about is a ridge. And ridges or ridge lines are areas of higher ground with steeper slopes on either side that tend to narrow out towards the end. Mature bucks and, and deer in general love these ridges. The tops usually have a lot of food as long with the side hills. The mature deer aren't usually gonna walk right across that open top for a few reasons. One being the human pressure and the other one just they have a, a thermal advantage by being able to travel along the side of the hill just over the edge of a bench or just above it. Here's an example of a ridge line that runs all the way down through the end of the point. And that brings me to my next topic which is a point or a spur as some people might call it. And that's basically where the sloping line of higher ground comes down to a point or a V shape down towards the end. One of the main reasons why bucks are bedding there are because when they're out on these points, they can see about 270 degrees. They can have the prevailing wind blowing over their back as they're looking down over the hill and catching those 
thermals during the day. So those thermals that are coming up from, from the sun heating up the mountainside, from the weather warming up, it's coming up and blowing at them in the face. So in reality, they have just about all their areas covered, even when they're you know resting in, in their bed for the day. A saddle is a low point on a ridge line where you have two draws that run up and have a little bit of a, a dip in elevation there. These areas can be really important to key in on from the standpoint of it's a low-lying area in the hills, that's where the deer like to travel. If they're traveling from one valley or one ridge line to the other, if they're gonna come up through, that's gonna be one of the areas they're gonna cross. In addition to that, still with how bucks run on ridges and deer run on ridges, running that side hill just you know just below some sort of a major train feature or flat spot is creating a good crossing. And as we were talking about with most of the scouting, focusing in on that late October through November time frame, this can be a really good area to increase your odds of being able to see a buck cruising. And I just mentioned within talking about saddles about the draw, which is the low lying area or depression that slopes downward from the top of the mountains. Sometimes can be in a saddle, other times it's off the side of a ridge. Here's more of an extreme example of a draw, a steep one that comes down through. As you can see, the top of the topography, the lines are further apart, meaning that it's less steep where you get to the bottom where the lines are closer together. This is another area, you know, I've been talking about the bucks running, you know, over the side of the hills along these areas and draws are another great example of that, especially when they get steeper down towards the bottom they're gonna be kind of running up towards that upper third of the hill for the most part. Mm -hmm. On the map here, you can see where the topographical lines are steeper on the upper side, and then they're steeper on the lower side. And you have a section here in the center that the lines are spread apart a little bit more. What you can expect is a little bit of a bench. And so those are areas I'm also going to check out. If I'm finding you know, a point that has bedding on it, I'm finding a good ridge line, some saddles, some travel corridors. The next thing I'm looking for are these benches that can be off the side of the mountain. Be able to check those out. Uh, a lot of times you'll find the rubs there, you'll find scrapes that are running those side hills. The last one that I want to talk about as far as the train feature is a, is a crick bottom. And there's a couple different types of crick bottoms. You have the major ones, the, the bigger rivers that are flowing through it, but those aren't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the smaller feeder streams some can be as small as four to six foot wide. Some of them could be 10 to 20 foot wide. With the crick bottoms, it's the hardest part about crick bottoms. I love hunting them and I've had a lot of success with hunting crick bottoms, but it all depends on the terrain around it. In the example that I have in the map here, this would not be a great example of hunting a crick bottom. Reason being is the terrain is really steep coming down to it and it would cause swirling winds to be really difficult to hunt. Not saying that the deer aren't gonna use it and cross through it like they would any other one, but it's pretty steep to run through there. With that being said, they can be great access for when you're going into a stand, you're gonna go up on top of a ridge. You want to start from the bottom, essentially in the mornings with the downward thermals coming down off the hill. Use those, those crick bottoms, sneak up through, and then cut up the draw that you're trying to get up to be able to be stealthy and kind of slip in there in the mornings while the deer are feeding. So in addition to terrain features, you can identify vegetation features on the map. And so I'm gonna go in, go in here and show you a bunch of the different vegetation features I'm looking for and how to identify them using Onyx. One of the first things I wanna talk about is surrounding conifer thickets. So I'm talking hemlock trees, pine trees, spruce trees, anything of that nature. And why I'm uh, talking about those type of trees, conifer trees is one, in, especially in like the late season and everything, they provide great bedding for thermal cover. They're cutting the winds down. They can be identified on the aerial map by a bluish, greenish tint, a darker tint. Uh, these are one of the tougher things to be able to identify on a map, but they are possible. So if we're looking at a map here. You can tell on the top we have some different, you can see different vegetation features and stuff, but as you dive down in here, these areas here that just slightly darker in color, I would imagine that that's going to be a bunch of conifer trees, most likely hemlocks. 
Since deer and bucks generally love to run edges of any sort, this is just another barrier or another feature that's breaking up the timber.